the common modality of governance. Right. The, the work we do, when we talk about rights, rights are something inalienable that we are born with. When we talk about human rights, we talk about those things that by virtue of being born that we are entitled to clean air, clean water, um, natural rights. And if they belong to humans, they in fact belong to all of creation. Um, the, 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 the ecosystem, the biosphere. Uh, and so when we speak about rights, what we're talking about is rights are higher law than, uh, than human law. Rights are those things that, uh, that, that we can't give away and they, can't, uh, they, they can be denied to us. And right now, when we talk about the, the rights of ecosystems, we're denying the rights of ecosystem to exist, to flourish, to evolve, and to regenerate their, uh, their natural cycles. We are a part of that. We are not above nature. We are not apart from nature. We have to recognize in culture and in law our relationship uh, with the biosphere. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about rights of nature. We're talking about ensuring that we live within the carrying capacity of the, of, of, of the earth. Yeah. Well, I think as we're here at the, at the Rio Plus 20 Summit, there's this uh, very big decision that we're facing. The green economy, as it has been proposed, is about privatizing and commoditizing nature and the services, the ecosystem services, those things that nature does for humans. Again, as if we own them and as, as if it can be something that, uh, that we can be bought and sold in the marketplace. And we have to decide as a, as, as a, as a human race whether we are going to continue to drive this market-based economic engine straight off the cliff or if we're going to stop and change directions and recognize that new economies uh, can, can not exist but need to exist. If we are planning to, uh, to have a future uh, as part of this planet, we need to live within the, that caring capacity. Yeah. So one of the things that when we look for movements for rights is really about driving those rights into, into law. How to make them real because the law is how we use power to enforce values of society. Uh, and right now what we have are uh, uh, values that are really just about economic primacy. But as a people and as a species, uh, and in our own communities, we have many, many divergent uh, and, uh, values that we all share, uh, and we need to we need to adjust our laws so that nature is not seen as property, something to be owned. And and if we do not change that law, uh, we cannot really fully uh, change the culture and uh, and and live within. Uh, and live within you know, our ecosystems and live in balance. And so this movement is really about changing law. In the United States, 130, uh, 140 communities have passed laws that recognize uh, rights for communities and rights for ecosystems. And the nation of Ecuador has passed this into their constitution. And the Universal Declaration is, uh, is about growing that movement worldwide.